The Peacock Room is one of the most extraordinary and controversial interiors of the 19th century. Now housed in the Freer Gallery of Art in Washington, D.C., it was originally the dining room in the London home of shipping magnate and art collector Frederick Richards Leyland. The room was designed by Thomas Jekyll from 1875 to 1876. However, later that year it was painted over by the artist James McNeil Whistler. Whistler gave the room a title as if it were an easel painting, Harmony in Blue and Gold, the Peacock Room. His drastic redecoration became the center of a bitter quarrel between him and Leyland. Their falling out kindled an atmosphere of myth and rumor that continues to surround the room today. Leyland was a self-made man. He began working at the shipping company John Bibby and Sons as a young apprentice and rapidly rose to become a partner in the firm. In 1873, Leyland bought out his partners and started his own shipping company, Leyland Line. At the age of 42, Leyland was already fluent in several languages, very wealthy and highly cultured. He was a generous patron of contemporary artists and a collector of blue and white porcelain. To hold his growing collection, Leyland took the lease of a house at number 49 Prince's Gate in London. It was an undistinguished Italianate stucco house located in the fashionable district of Kensington. Leyland left the exterior as he found it, but within, he set about creating a palace of art filled with old master and contemporary paintings, Italian bronzes, antiques, oriental carpets, tapestries, and porcelain. Jekyll's first project at 49 Prince's Gate was probably Leyland's study in the basement of the house. Here Jekyll paneled the walls with American walnut and hung gilt leather above the dado. The color scheme was old gold and green bronze to complement the Renaissance paintings and fine antique furniture. Jekyll also designed pendant gas lamps, which were made by the firm B. Verity & Sons of Covent Garden. The brass fittings of the lamps were pierced with Japanese-style flowers, butterflies, and dragonflies. Both the leather-lined walls and the pendant ceiling lamps would reappear in Jekyll's scheme for the dining room. The dining room was to be the centerpiece of Jekyll's work on the house. Leyland specifically requested that the room incorporate three parts of his collection. A group of Chinese porcelain recently purchased from art dealer Murray Marks, wall panels of antique 18th century gilt leather, and Whistler's painting, La Princesse du Pays de la Porcelaine. Jekyll's design for the dining room reinterpreted a 17th century interior known as the porcelain cabinet. These rooms were dedicated to the display of China and became popular as a result of the massive influx of Asian porcelain into Europe during the 17th century. The earliest example of a porcelain cabinet was probably the China display room created in 1662 at the Oranienburg Palace near Berlin. The porcelain cabinet became fashionable in England during the reign of William and Mary of Orange. Queen Mary II commissioned China display rooms for Hampton Court Palace and Kensington Palace in the late 17th century. A porcelain cabinet typically featured intricate shelving, Chinese-inspired brackets, and gilt leather covering the walls above the dado. Gilt leather was thought of as the most flattering background for Asian objects. At 49 Prince's Gate, Jekyll designed a wooden understructure in the dining room to create his porcelain cabinet. Although the original framework was lost in 1904 when the room was first moved, it would have been similar to the structure that was built in 1948 during the restoration of the Peacock Room at the Freer Gallery of Art. To the upper part of this framework, Jekyll attached the antique 18th century gilt leather. These panels, which had been removed from a Tudor house in Norfolk, were distinctly Dutch in style. 
Under the layers of paint that Whistler had added, traces of the original Rococo pattern can still be detected. Intertwining ribbons and small flowers of red, blue, and yellow were stamped and painted onto the leather. The original leather would have been similar in appearance to this example from the German Wallpaper Museum in Kassel, Germany. Over the leather, Jekyll affixed carved walnut shelving to display the blue and white china. The lattice work of the shelves concealed the seams between the leather panels. The patterns on the woodwork were derived from Chinese and Persian ornament, possibly taken from the popular Victorian pattern book, The Grammar of Ornament, by Owen Jones. Early in 1876, Jekyll had designed similar patterned uprights for his cast and wrought iron pavilion, showcased at the Philadelphia Centennial Exhibition. The sunflower railings surrounding the pavilion were adapted by Jekyll to become andirons. A pair of these sunflower andirons stood in front of the fireplace in the dining room. Other parts of the woodwork were inspired by Chinese furniture forms, especially the square scroll brackets just above the dado panels. Jekyll varied the incised patterns on some of these brackets to create a rich decorative effect. More Chinese-inspired brackets appear on the first tier of shelving. The motif was picked up again in the sideboard on the end wall opposite the fireplace. Although this sideboard is sometimes attributed to Whistler, it was designed by Jekyll as an integral part of his scheme. Whistler painted the sideboard with the same patterns that he used on the dado panels of the room, making it blend in with the wall. Earlier in the room's history, a sideboard by Philip Webb stood against the wall between the two doors. Jekyll evidently designed one wall of the dining room to accommodate this piece, since it fit exactly into a space surrounded by shelving. The sideboard was subsequently removed, and Whistler painted the wall to disguise its absence. Along with Chinese and Persian ornament, Jekyll used Jacobean motifs in his designs for the dining room. The double panel dado is of Jacobean derivation, as is the magnificent ceiling. This wood and canvas ceiling was constructed to mimic fan vaulting. The inspiration for the star-shaped patterns probably came from the 16th century plaster ceiling in the oak parlor at Heath Old Hall, which Jekyll had restored from 1865 to 1872. The pattern on the ceiling is based on an eight-pointed star, arranged in two rows with four stars each. The brass and white glass pendant gas lights that Jekyll had designed for Leyland's study reappear here, in two rows of four lamps, each lamp descending from the center of a star. The gold-colored lighting of the lamps incorporate fan shapes that are also echoed in the lighting of the service room door. These shapes, derived from Japanese cloud or wave patterns, would appear again in Whistler's overpainting of the room. By the spring of 1876, the room was all but complete. In April, Leyland wrote to Whistler asking him to give Jekyll some ideas for the coloring of the doors and shutters. At the time, Whistler was already working at 49 Prince's Gate. He was decorating the dado panels of the staircase in the hall with a treatment known as Dutch metal, a combination of copper and zinc that was allowed to oxidize and darken to a rich green-gold color before being glazed. At this point, Jekyll succumbed to a debilitating mental illness that had plagued him all his life. It became apparent that Jekyll could not complete his commission. Within a few weeks, Whistler had replaced Jekyll in the dining room. He began to use Dutch metal on the ceiling, doors, cornice, dado, and shutters. He also started touching up the leather, using yellow paint to cover the red flowers that clashed with the rose sash of the princess in his painting. Gradually, Whistler started to assert his own artistic vision over Jekyll's design. He began to paint a pattern of waveforms at the base of the dado and on the cornice. As he worked, these wave shapes evolved into patterns derived from the feathers of the peacock. Whistler then extended the cornice design into the ceiling. By the fall of 1876, he had gilded the shelving and painted peacocks on the shutters. In October, having realized that his piecemeal changes had upset the coloring of the room, 
Whistler began the final transformation of the leather, painting it over with Prussian blue and gold, and entirely appropriating Jekyll's scheme. Jekyll's contribution to the dining room, his last and perhaps greatest interior design commission, was soon forgotten. His obituaries in 1881 would not even mention his involvement with the creation of one of the most brilliant interiors of the aesthetic movement. In 1904, the room was dismantled and moved to Obach Galleries on Bond Street in London. It was purchased by the American Charles Freer, who moved it to his residence in Detroit. Upon his death in 1919, he bequeathed it to the Freer Gallery of Art in Washington, D.C., where it opened to the public in 1923.